All right, this is consciousness, section B lecture. Our prioritized standards is, is 7A. Objectively, we're going to evaluate the necessity for sleep and also the different stages of sleep. While some animals sleep only rarely with no apparent negative consequences, like there are some fish that don't sleep at all and giraffes sleep very little, humans actually spend roughly a third of their life sleeping, with sleep playing a central role in enabling the human brain to function at optimal levels. Now, the amount of necessary sleep varies across the lifespan, but generally, the younger you are, the more sleep your body requires to function optimally. Now, when very young, we spend up to 16 hours sleeping, but by the age of 65, the average is less than 7 hours per day. Now, many people do not actually get enough sleep and can acquire a sleep deficit, which is sometimes referred to as a sleep debt, as in this visual, which is the result of insufficient sleep on a chronic basis. Now, generally, if you lie down to take a nap and you fall asleep very quickly, chances are you actually have a sleep deficit. Now, gaining a sleep deficit can be due to certain work schedules, so those that work a rotating work schedule can regularly attain a sleep debt, so like uh, nurses that work 12-hour shifts, as for instance. Uh, travel... Related jet lag can be another reason for a sleep deficit. So when you travel over several time zones and have difficulty getting on a sleep-wake cycle that matches the environment you're in, or other more severe disorders. A sleep deficit results in either partial or total sleep deprivation. Now, partial sleep deprivation is when you get sleep but are consistently not getting enough sleep for several days or weeks. Now, total sleep deprivation is the failure to get any sleep over a 24-hour time period. Now, some sleep-deprived individuals have difficulty staying awake when they stop moving. That's me. A mild sleep deficit can result in consequences like decreased levels of alertness and mental efficiency, while more severe sleep deficit results in severe sleep deprivation that can have severe negative psychological and physiological consequences. Uh, the advent of electric lights has actually led to a general decline in the amount of sleep that people get. So this issue of sleep deprivation is tied with the fact that we have electricity and lights and we don't have to go to bed when the sun goes down. Now, sleep deprivation also results in depression-like symptoms. So the effects can occur as a function of accumulated sleep debt or in response to more acute periods of sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation is associated with obesity, increased blood pressure, increased levels of stress hormones, and reduced immune functioning. Some people actually believe that young people are sometimes misdiagnosed with ADHD when they might actually have sleep deprivation, as they can lead to some of the same symptoms. Now, research suggests that sleep deprivation affects cognitive and motor functioning as much as alcohol intoxication. Now, most severe effects occur when a person stays awake for more than 24 hours or following repeated nights with uh, between about four hours of sleep for at least five nights. Now, staying awake for 48 consecutive hours could cause a person to actually start to hallucinate. Now, those suffering from sleep deprivation may actually experience microsleeps, which are brief sidesteps into sleep lasting at tops only a few seconds, which can actually lead to very dangerous situations, especially if you're driving a car or operating some type of heavy machinery. Chances are, like this example, you've probably seen something like this if you've ever been in a school uh, that students sometimes go into microsleep. While it is Known that sleep is important for humans, there is not a clear understanding as to why humans sleep with a couple possible theories offering exp explanations for why we sleep. There's the adaptive theory of sleep, which proposes that animals and humans evolve sleep patterns to avoid predators by sleeping when the predators are the most active. And we also have another theory, the restorative theory of sleep, which proposes that sleep is necessary to the physical health of the body, 
and serves to replenish chemicals and repair cellular damage. There are other theories. Now, sleep is not a uniform state of being, but rather is composed of several different stages that can be differentiated by the patterns of brainwave activity occurring during each stage of sleep. Now, these changes in brainwave activity can be visualized using an EEG and are established from, or rather distinguished, from one another by both the frequency and amplitude of brain waves. Sleep can be divided into two general phases, REM sleep and non-REM sleep, or in-REM sleep. Now, rapid eye movement, or REM, this is a stage of sleep in which the eyes move rapidly under the eyelids, and the person is typically experiencing a dream. With non-rapid eye movement, these are any of the stages of sleep that do not include rapid eye movement. There are four stages of sleep that are distinguished based upon characteristic patterns of brain waves as measured by an EEG, which allows scientists to determine when a person passes through the various stages of sleep and to determine what type of sleep the person has entered. One type of brain wave is alpha waves, which are brain waves that indicate a state of relaxation or light sleep. You can also see theta waves, which are brain waves indicating the early stages of sleep. And then you can also have delta waves, which are long, slow waves that indicate the deepest stage of sleep. Non REM stage one sleep is a transitional phase occurring between wakefulness and sleep during which we drift off to sleep. Now there is a slowdown in both the rates of respiration and heartbeat with decreases in both muscle tension and core body temperature when you have non-REM stage one. The early portion of stage one sleep produces alpha waves, yet as stage one sleep continues, there is an increase in theta waves. It is relatively easy to wake someone from stage one sleep, with many experiencing this sleep reporting to not having been asleep. I was just resting my eyes, as often all will say. In this stage, one may experience hypnagogic images, which are hallucinations or hallucinations or vivid visual events, or hypnic jerks which are involuntary jerks of the knees, legs, or whole body jerks for that matter. Non-REM stage two sleep is a phase when the body goes into a deep relaxation where theta waves dominate the activity of the brain yet interrupted by brief bursts of activity known as sleep spindles and the appearance of K complexes. A sleep spindle is a rapid burst of higher frequency brain waves that may be important for learning and memory. These sleep spindles generally last for a second or two. Now, K-complex, this is a very high amplitude pattern of brain activity that may occur in response to environmental stimuli. Uh, might serve as a bridge to higher levels of arousal in response to what is going on in our environments. Now, non-REM stage 3 sleep is a phase often referred to as deep sleep or slow wave sleep, which is characterized by delta waves. During this phase, an individual's heart rate and respiration slow dramatically, with the body being at its lowest level of functioning. This is the sleep stage at which growth actually occurs. It is more difficult to awaken someone from sleep during this stage than in any of the earlier stages. Now, those awakened at this stage often report not feeling refreshed upon waking, regardless of how long they actually slept. Now, REM sleep is the phase when a person enters sleep where brainwave activity is actually very similar to when a person is awake and is a period of sleep in which dreaming occurs. If awoken during this stage of sleep, the person will almost always report having had a dream. REM sleep is associated with paralysis of muscle systems in the body, with the exception of those that make circulation and respiration possible. REM sleep is often referred to as a paradoxal sleep because of this combination of high brain activity and lack of muscle tone. 
REM sleep has been associated with various aspects of learning and memory and may be involved in emotional processing and regulation. Deprivation of REM sleep is also associated with what's called REM rebound, which are increased amounts of REM sleep after being deprived of REM sleep on earlier nights. So REM rebound may actually represent an adaptive response to stress in non-depressed individuals by suppressing the emotional importance of aversive events that occurred while awake. So if uh, you're not getting enough REM sleep, then the time that it takes you to get to REM sleep actually shortens and you spend more time in REM. All right, that concludes Consciousness Section B Lecture. Our prioritized standard was 7A. Objectively, you can evaluate the necessity for sleep and the different stages of sleep.